This is Pikmin 3 without the whistle. Wait, how am I gonna do this? It's gonna have all the same issues that the first two games have. I have to round up Pikmin manually, environmental hazards are insta-kill, and the boss fights are ridiculous. But Pikmin 3 also introduces a new Pikmin type that might make this challenge impossible. Either way, we're trying anyways, so here's Pikmin 3 without the whistle. So just like with Pikmin 2, the very first thing the game wants you to do is use the whistle. You're supposed to call these yellow Pikmin with Charlie. It's basically a cutscene because the only thing you can do is move the cursor and use the whistle. And since it's not regular gameplay, I won't be counting it. We then continue on and finish the rest of the Charlie section without any trouble. And then we find Elf, and the same thing happens. The game freezes us in place and forces us to use the whistle. We could totally gather up these Pikmin by bumping into them, but the game isn't allowing us to move. So again, I won't be counting it. I then find this little guy who I can't get without the whistle. Which made me kind of nervous because there's a bots ahead that we need 20 Pikmin to push. And I didn't know if the game would give us enough Pikmin without this guy to push it. Thankfully, we're able to get exactly 20, moving forward and leaving this little guy to fend for himself. Five minutes in and the run was already almost over. This is gonna be fun. Day two, we find the rock Pikmin, and once again, the game does this stupid thing where it freezes us in place, forcing us to use the whistle. I'm assuming at this point that it's gonna do it for every Pikmin type, but either way, we find Brittany, collect some fruit, and end the day. On day two, we build this bridge, and then find the armored Maudad, the first boss of this run. And it's kinda just chaos. He has the same issue as the armored cannon beetle in Pikmin 1. Pikmin will just attack him doing no damage, and I can't call them off. But unlike the armored cannon beetle, he moves fast enough that the Pikmin just can't keep up. And once they lose him, they'll just stand there and go idle, allowing me to round them up. But since rounding them up is so slow, I end up getting caught in his jaws a lot. Thankfully here, I was able to break out just before he killed all my Pikmin. But just look at all this chaos, there's Pikmin everywhere. I'm just running around like a crazy person trying to bump into as many rots as possible. And once I gather up enough, I'm finally able to break the armor on his tail. And once that happened, I was able to get enough damage on him to kill him. We only ended up losing 26 Pikmin, but it seemed like a lot worse. Either way, we end up collecting the Data Glutton, unlocking the Distant Tundra. In the Distant Tundra, we find the Yellow Pikmin. And to my absolute shock, the game didn't force us to use the whistle. As I was building my Yellow Army, I accidentally threw two Yellow Pikmin up on this branch. Which, again, just like the bot situation earlier, scared me. Because we needed 20 yellows to push this ball and escape the cave. Thankfully, we were able to get just enough to push the ball. So it didn't matter that these two were just stuck up there. We then worked on completing this bridge so we could reunite Alf and Brittany. And as we were building the bridge, I made a crucial mistake. I ordered a bunch of Pikmin to bring back these enemies to base. But since the bridge wasn't finished yet, they were stuck. And since I can't use the whistle, I couldn't call them back. So unless I finished the bridge, they were all dead. So I got to work. Yeah, I didn't even come close. The day ended and we ended up losing 36 Pikmin to the night. The next day, we ended up finishing the bridge and collecting a bunch of fruit. Nothing too special. On day six, we head over towards the Behemoth Fosspad's domain. And we end up stepping on a random fire geyser and we have to watch while 18 Pikmin die. Regardless, we power through and make it to the Fosspat. And honestly, this fight isn't bad at all. The Fosspat only has two moves, this Vortex move and this Poison Spray. And neither of them really do anything. I thought the Vortex would be a problem because you're supposed to whistle them to call them out of it, but even if you have a bunch of Pikmin trapped, he only kills like four or five at a time. So it doesn't really matter. And the poison spray would have been devastating if it actually killed Pikmin. It just kind of makes them freak out and run around for a bit, and then they're just fine. And even if they accidentally run into the electricity, it, it doesn't matter. Because electricity doesn't kill in Pikmin 3. It just stuns them for a bit, and then they stand up. 
If environmental hazards were as dangerous as they were in the first two games, this boss would be a nightmare. But they aren't. This is a poison attack in Pikmin 2. And then this is one in Pikmin 3. It's night and day. So even though we can't save them with the whistle, none of these attacks really do anything. So we end up beating him with barely any trouble, only losing 23 Pikmin in the process. On day 8, we work on building bridges around the tropical wilds, and I end up making the same mistake I did back in the distant tundra. I get Pikmin to bring back enemies before the bridges are finished. So again, I make a mad rush to finish the bridge before the day ends. And again, I don't make it. So all the Pikmin carrying enemies and all the Pikmin building the bridge all die. 45 in total. So the most dangerous thing in this run so far has been the fucking bridges. On day 9, we work more on opening up the tropical wilds, so we can reach the Sambelchin Mir Slug. And on day 10, we get to him. And this fight was pretty bad. First off, we couldn't get the bombs around the arena, because if I threw my Pikmin up there, the only way I could get them back was with the whistle. And it wasn't until after the fight that I realized I could have just gotten bombs earlier and brought them into the arena. And that proved to be a costly mistake. Because this move right here, the ones that bombs are supposed to directly counter, would devastate my Pikmin. Like this one right here, where we end up losing 22 Pikmin to one attack. Normally, I'd be able to save them with the whistle, but since I can't do that, I just have to sit here and watch them all die. And I know you're probably thinking, why didn't you just run to the side of the arena and avoid the attack? Well, that was easier said than done. Because every time I would attack him, my Pikmin would end up being scattered everywhere. And with no quick way to round them up, I was basically a sitting duck for this attack. But regardless, we were finally able to bring down the Mir Slug, which cost us the lives of 54 Pikmin. And you would think with almost half the day left, we would be able to bring everything back to the ship no problem. It ended up coming down to the final 10 seconds. And it was mostly because this little watermelon piece somehow stopped the Pikmin from bringing back the Mir Slug. And then the Mir Slug basically created a giant traffic jam which made everything take twice as long to bring back. But either way, we were able to bring back everything just in time and move on to the Twilight River. And in the Twilight River, we find winged Pikmin and start building up our numbers. Oh, um, that's a problem. Since wind Pikmin fly, we can't just bump into them to get their attention. And since we can't get their attention, we can't use them. And if we can't use wind Pikmin, it means we can't progress any further in the game. And if we can't progress any further in the game, does that mean the run's over? Nah, we could totally do this. After doing a bit of testing, I found two methods of gathering up wind Pikmin without the whistle. The first was throwing a captain, then switching to that captain, which causes them to do a little jump just high enough to touch the Pikmin. The second is pressing the dismiss button, which also causes the captain to jump. Again, just barely high enough to touch the Pikmin. Now, there's problems with both these methods. The first is throwing the captains is pretty inaccurate. You need to be directly under the Pikmin before you jump or it just doesn't work. So this method isn't super reliable. And using the dismiss button dismisses the Pikmin under your control. So you can only ever collect one at a time. Which forces you to either collect a Pikmin, use it, collect another one, then rinse and repeat, or do what I did for most of the run. Collect a Pikmin with one captain, then bump into another captain, effectively handing the Pikmin over. Then throw the original captain and repeat until I collected all the wings. And as you can imagine, this took forever. And oh yeah, sometimes they're just too high up so you can't grab them no matter what. Especially if you use them to hold up a gate or grab this branch for example. Like there's nothing I can do here to get them back. So a lot of wind Pikmin ended up being single use. I would use them for their one task and then leave them there to die. And if something like this happened, I would just have to restart the day, because it would take way too long to gather them all up. And then sometimes I would just use them all and they would all be left for dead, like on day 14 when I had a winged Pikmin extension. It's honestly hard to get across how annoying it was to play the game like this. Like right here, I got a bunch of them to collect these grapes, and it ends up taking me 2 straight minutes to collect them all. And a day in Pikmin 3 is only 13 minutes long. So basically a quarter of my day was spent collecting these 20 winged Pikmin. 
And things like this just kept happening. Everything took so long. It ended up taking me 7 days in the Twilight River just to make it to the boss. You can beat the entirety of Pikmin 3 in 7 days. And it took me 7 just to get to the boss. And this was without collecting a lot of the fruits. And once I got to the boss, it didn't get much better. You're normally supposed to beat this boss by waiting for it to attack. Then attacking yourself once all his little bee protectors are gone. The problem is, once I sent them to attack, I wasn't getting them back. They would get knocked off and then just sit there idly, too high for me to reach. You can see me here jumping under a group of them and I only come away with one. I just couldn't gather up enough to do significant damage to him. It wasn't like I was losing a lot of Pikmin, I just couldn't kill him fast enough. It was already halfway through the day and I'd only done a quarter of his health bar. And basically all my Pikmin were unusable. And at this point, I didn't know what to do. This fight seemed impossible. I needed to gather up my Pikmin to do damage, but there was no way of gathering them up. There just wasn't. Well, that's not 100% true. After fighting him a couple times, I noticed something that could possibly help me. The Scorna boss is different from a regular boss in the way that his attacks work. They don't instantly kill your Pikmin. Instead, every one of your Pikmin hit by one of his attacks will circle around the boss being carried by an enemy Scornet only perishing if you don't save them in time. Well, the thing is, I had so many idle Pikmin standing around, and they would just all try and save the other Pikmin by killing the Scornets. And I noticed if I was standing underneath them as they killed a Scornet, they would come straight back to me instead of going idle. And this was huge. It gave me a way to reliably get winged Pikmin back. And it didn't just work for saving Pikmin. Basically, any time they killed a Scornet and I was near them, they would come back to me. And using this simple strategy, I was able to dispose of the Scorna boss without losing a single Pikmin. And with the Scorna boss down, we turn our eyes to the Garden of Hope, where we end up finding blue Pikmin. And other than that, there really isn't too much else to say, until we reach the boss that is. And honestly, the Quaggle Myrclops really wasn't too bad. The only part that really sucked was after I attacked him, my Pikmin would be thrown everywhere and I couldn't collect them fast enough to avoid the tongue attack, which resulted in a lot of casualties. But other than that, it was a pretty standard fight, and we kill him pretty easily, with 73 Pikmin paying the ultimate price. And with that, we move on to the formidable Oak, and up to this point, I had really been dreading this part. It's a part of the game that requires you to act quickly, because the whole time you're being chased by the Plasma Wraith. And acting quickly without the whistle is really difficult, so I thought it was going to be a nightmare. But it turns out it was incredibly easy. Not having the whistle didn't really even come into play too much. The only part that was a little bit annoying was building this bridge at the end, because the Pikmin just kept walking into the Plasma Wraith and I couldn't really stop them. But other than that, it was super easy. And so was the last boss. If you've seen my no whistle runs of Pikmin 1 and 2, you'll know that without the whistle, those bosses felt impossible. It took me multiple hours and the formulation of specific strategies just to give me a chance to beat them. And I beat the Plasma Wraith on my first try. And to be fair, I did lose a lot of Pikmin, but it never felt like I was in any danger of losing the fight. The Plasma Wraith, like the Titan Dweevil, has a lot of elemental attacks. But as I've mentioned before, the elemental hazards in Pikmin 3 just aren't dangerous. You can save Pikmin by bumping into them, which is something you just couldn't do in 1 and 2. And elements like electricity that were devastating insta-kills in Pikmin 2 now just stun your Pikmin. And even if they were deadly, the attacks of Plasma Relief does just aren't. Like, look at the water attack from the Titan Dweebel for example. In a no whistle run, it has the potential to wipe your entire team. Now, look at the water attack from the Plasma Wraith. Like, unless you purposely throw your Pikmin in it, it just doesn't do anything. And they are all like this. The only one that is slightly menacing is the Block. But because it moves so slowly, you can just basically ignore it. His Needle attack can be pretty devastating, and it's actually what I lost most of my Pikmin to, but again, it doesn't even matter. Because the Onion is literally 5 seconds away, so you can just grab more Pikmin whenever you want. Which is what I did, and it was more than enough to beat him. Not having the whistle hardly changed the fight at all. I just lost more Pikmin than I normally would. Oh yeah, and I also fought the game's three mini-bosses. And they were also super easy. 
The Cromad was slightly annoying, but the Snagrit literally died instantly. And I thought Shaggy Longlegs might have been hard because of how hard Beatty was in the first game, but he wasn't. Instead of mindlessly attacking his legs like they did in the first game, the Pikmin would actually climb up his legs and attack Shaggy. So the fight kind of plays itself. One thing I found kind of funny was after the fight was over, there was just a bunch of stunned Pikmin lying on the ground since I couldn't whistle them. So I just had to leave them for dead. But yeah, aside from a couple mandatory parts in the beginning that totally won't be counted, you can definitely beat Pikmin 3 without the whistle. Dealing with the wind Pikmin was super annoying, but considering how easy the rest of the game is, it totally made up for it. And if you're hungry for some more Pikmin challenge runs, why don't you check out these two videos where I beat 1 and 2 without the whistle.